What is up YouTube? Welcome to FL Outdoors. I'm Philip, your host for the day. Uh, today, we're live on location at Casa Madre. Um, we're going to play around in the pool. This is my boy Buster. Uh, today, we're going to be working with Drop Shot, Texas Rig, Carolina Rig, and Wacky Rig, and show you what they look like underwater and how to set them up. Uh, Alright guys, for the first setup, we're going to do the Texas Rig. Um, right now on my pole I have right now on my pole I have 20 pound braid uh, for the purposes of the first demonstration I'm gonna set up the Texas rig with the braid so that way you can see what the braid looks like underwater along with how the Texas rig looks up underwater and then after that we're gonna either be using an Albright knot or a, I don't remember the name of it I'll look it up and tell you in a minute uh, we're going to do a mono leader uh, to do the rest of our rigs so that way you can see braid versus mono um, how to attach a leader and other things like that so all right guys so first up is the texas rig uh, today i've chosen the eagle claw 3 16th ounce uh, slider weight i uh, have the eagle claw two eye hooks and uh, my worm choice today is the Red Shad 7.5 inch culprit worm. Alright, so for those of you that get excited like I do, don't forget once you tie the hook on, nothing else goes on to the line. So the weight goes on first. If we can get the weight on. In the hook. So, sorry for the plane noise. We live right next to an airport, so I'm gonna try and bear with me just as best as possible. So, we've got our line and our weight already on, um, and I'm just gonna use a generic fishing knot. It's something that I learned. As a little kid, um, I'm not sure if there's a name for it or what to call it, but basically, we're going to just kind of start twisting our hook here. Uh, five to ten times is good. If you want to be an overachiever, do it 15 or 20 times. Good for you. Um, but basically, what we've done here is we've created a little loop down at the bottom where our hook is. So we're going to take the tag line tag into the line and run it through the loop that we created at the top of the hook and that gives us something that looks a little bit like this and then we're going to take the tag end and I like to encompass the whole knot and bring it all the way around and then feed it back through the big loop that we made now with braid it's real important to always wet your knots So now we have a good strong knot there. Okay, so there we go. We're all set up for the Texas rig. Line's ready to put a worm on it. So what I like to do for the Texas rig is I'm going to run the barb into my hook just about that far into the worm. So you see, uh, just until the curve starts is about how deep we're going to run the hook. Then we're going to just let the hook poke through and feed it all the way up to the top of the hook uh, towards the eye. And then we're going to hook back through our worm when it wants to cooperate. So we're going to hook back through our worm and come all the way back out the other side so that way the barbs exposed here and then to make this a weedless setup we're going to just barely stick the tip of the barb back in through the worm this is completely weedless the only time you're going to have to worry about weeds is when your weight gets hung up 
and when a bass comes up and bites onto it it'll pop pop the hook back out of the plastic so when you set the hook your hook sets will be good to go so let's throw this thing in the water and see what it looks like down there so when you're fishing the Texas rig uh, you just kind of want to give it a couple bumps let it sit for a little bit reel in your slack give it a couple more bumps let it sit reel in your slack bump reel and this kind of gives it a decent little action um, nice part about the texas rig is it sinks real quick you don't have to worry about weeds and it's just a great easy setup that anybody can do anybody can use it just simple so if you're not sure what to throw or you run out of options my fallback is always the Texas rig with a weightless worm uh, like the culprit worm that we're using uh, especially if there's a nice current that tail just kind of sits and flicks and gives it a little action while it's under the water Now, everything that we're talking about today only applies to fresh water. Uh, when you fish salt water, um, the salinity or content of the salt in the water uh, causes things to float. So if you're using things that are supposed to sink, they might not sink as well in salt water. that worm has its own natural action with that tail like it is. So you could just reel the worm as is by itself uh, like if you're trolling in a boat and just kind of trying to find a good spot you can always just throw your worm over the side of the boat and let it drag behind the boat and the worm will do its own do its own thing. All right, that's the Texas wit rig. Uh, we're going to step up to a more difficult setup, which is the Carolina rig next. Uh, it requires a lot more equipment and a lot more technique and everything else um, and basically the only difference between the Carolina rig and the Texas rig as far as the worm setup and everything like that is how you do your weights and your leader so we'll get into that next all right guys so now we're going to go over the tech the Carolina rig uh, same worm and same hook setup as before but instead we're going to need egg sinkers I've got the bullet weights half ounce egg sinker uh, you're gonna need some beads I've got rod and bobs fluorescent beads it's a two size pack uh, some barrel swivels and you also need some fluoro or mono uh, really doesn't matter whichever your preference is I've got eight pound fluoro here for trialing um, 
so we'll go ahead and get those things set up for you. All right, so now we're going to do our Carolina rig. Um, I've never used this, but just for the sake of the video, uh, we're going to throw it on today um, just to show you the difference between the setups and everything. First thing you're going to do is take your braid, slide on your egg sinker, and then behind your egg sinker, you're going to slide on your bead. Uh, the bead is there to help protect your knot from the egg sinker. So uh, this is what we have so far, just the egg sinker and the bead on there. Then we're going to take our barrel swivel, same fishing knot as before. If you guys know the name of this knot, uh, leave it down in the comment section for me. And with braid, always wet your knot. So this is what we have so far. We've got braid, egg sinker, bead, barrel swivel. Now we're going to take our fluoro. This is just trilene, eight pound fluoro. Uh, you can pick it up at Walmart. It's about six dollars a spool. And on the other end of this barrel sinker, we're going to tie our fluoro. Always snip your tag in. That'll help reduce weeds and stuff of that nature. So we're going to give ourselves about 12 inches, 8 to 12 inches of a fluoro leader. And then on goes the hook. Like I said, this is a super complicated setup. Um, it's not something that I would generally use just because it takes so long to get going. Then we're going to take our worm just like we did before. Kind of go in about the same depth as the Texas rig. Come out our worm loop it through and again this is a weedless setup uh, but this is your Carolina rig and so let's drop it in the water and see how that looks so we have our Carolina rig set up um, this leader is actually a little long uh, this is more like a fisherman's 12 inches um, it's actually probably closer to 18 inches uh, but we'll drop her in the water and see what happens with it basically what it looks like is uh, the worm's got a little delayed fall it's not as fast as it is with the Texas rig um, You've got a lot more leader movement. Kind of makes it look like the worm is dragging the bottom. And we're going to use the same pattern that we did with the Texas rig. It's going to be a bump up, bump bump pause. bump bump pause this gives fish time to really think about how delicious that worm looks underwater especially that red shad color I'd probably eat it if I was the fish so you know that means it's good enough for them right just kind of drops to the bottom there nice easy hover going on
again, this is a weedless setup, so if you're fishing in a really grassy area, uh, this would be ideal. Nice part about the weight position is it keeps the grass off of your worm. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with, uh, grass will usually get hung up on your weight, not on your worm. So it's nice, it keeps the weight up off the worm and keeps the grass away from the worm. Carolina rig. Up next we're going to try the drop shot. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use the Albright knot and to do a braid to fluoro leader um, and we'll set up the drop shot next. Now we're going to do our braid to fluoro leader. Uh, we still have that trilene uh, 8 pound test fluoro and the 20 pound braid. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your braid and put it into a loop, a nice little loop like this here. And then you're going to take your fluoro and run it in through your loop. So we've got our loop. Fluoro goes through the loop. And we're going to twist it. Basically all we're doing here is we're running the fluoro around the braid. We're going to do this seven to ten times. Now that we've twisted up seven times, we're going to twist down five times. Feed it back through our loop on the opposite side. And just pull. And there's your all bright knot. Uh, it's a real easy night not for going from braid to fluoro or changing line diameters it's kind of similar to a nail knot uh, without actually having to use a nail but it's a really good really strong knot uh, now we're going to get into our drop shot uh, for this setup we're going to use the uh, bullets weights uh, basic bass casting weights uh, cylinder weights are preferred um, but these will do just fine and uh, I prefer lead when I'm choosing weights. A lot of guys like to use tungsten uh, for their weight choice. Uh, but when you use lead, it's a lot softer material than tungsten is. So if for some reason you have too much weight or anything like that, you can cut your lead weights with a good pair of pliers and make easy on-the-go adjustments. So lead is my preference for weight choice. And it's a little bit cheaper than tungsten if you're fishing on a budget. We're also going to use the Zoom Super Salt Plus uh, Salty Super Fluke and the Baby Bass and the Mustad Size 4 uh, All Purpose Hook. So for our drop shot we're going to take our hook and go up about 8 to 12 inches and we're going to tie off our hook. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to tie off our weight. Then we're just going to hook our little lure here right through the nose. like that 
and this is your drop shot right so we've got our drop shot here um, I tied mine a little short because we're going to be using the same leader for the wacky rig setup in a few minutes but uh, this is great for throwing undercover um, so if you come across a pier or a dock or some pilings or anything next to cover uh, this is a great tool to have in your arsenal So under the water, uh, the drop shot, uh, basically the weight goes to the bottom and the hook helps the lure float. So it kind of gives it that twitching motion in front of bass or other big fish that you're going after. Um, but you kind of just sit there and bump it every once in a while. Really don't have to reel it any. You can drop it right in on top of fish and it brings it right up to their eye level. This is not weedless, so it's not ideal for fishing in grass or pads or anything like that. Uh, you can set this up with a Texas rig worm if you want to. Um, basically, the only thing that you're going to do different is how you set up the worm without the slider weight on it. And this is just one of those sit and wait uh, type setups. You really don't have to do any reeling. You just sit this right in on top of where you think bass are sitting. Or if you have the fish finder going, you can drop it right in on top of fish. And you just sit there and let the tip of the rod do the action. I'm using a medium heavy rod right now. Um, it'd probably be a lot easier to do this with a lighter action, not necessarily an ultralight, but maybe a medium light or a light action and you just kind of sit there and twitch it weightless would be the way to go with this uh, just kind of sits there and floats right in front of them and most of your action comes from the rod tip there's not really any reel in you can move it from cover to cover. Um, most of this is just kind of twitching. We're done with the drop shot. Uh, next on, we're going to set up the wacky rig. Uh, Our last setup for the day, we're going to do the wacky rig. Uh, for this, we're going to use a Mustad size 4 hook, and we're going to use big bite baits. Uh, trick stick it's a five inch trick stick um, a lot of people prefer Senkos Senkos are eight dollars a bag uh, this is a 10 pack that I picked up for four dollars um, I'm not sure if you guys saw AP Bassing did a video on uh, Senkos versus Cheapos and figured out that they're pretty much the same so if you're balling on a budget like I am uh, just go with the trick sticks they're a lot cheaper they work the same uh, there's not really that much of a difference um, so uh, one thing that'll come in handy when you're trying to do the wacky rig is a wacky rig tool uh, I have misplaced mine so we're not going to be using that today uh, but basically you take your stick worm fold it in half if you don't have a wacky rig tool and then just hook it right through the middle just like that and it creates a little wobble 
there. Um, the only problem with setting it up this way is your plastics break and they wear out a lot quicker. So if you have a bass that comes up and just does a hit like that, you've basically destroyed your worm if you hold on to it or you've lost it completely. So that's where the wacky rig tool comes in handy. And here we are back to the wacky rig. Now I am going to show you, I was talking about a nail weight in the other video. I'm going to show you basically a nail weight is what it says. You take a tack nail and you use it as a weight. Hey. All right, so we've got our nail. Uh, this is just a little uh, hanging nail. You can use it for hanging pictures and stuff like that. And we're going to take it into the head of our worm and just push it in like so. Uh, basically, what that does is it provides a little weight this way, uh, changes the pattern of the fall, and everything like that. So I'll show you with the nail weight and without the nail weight uh, once we get back in the water. All right, so we've got the wacky rig uh, set up here with the nail weight. Uh, and don't go to your sporting goods store looking for a nail weight. You need to go to your hardware store and look for a nail to use as a weight, just in case anybody's confused about that. Uh, this is not a weedless setup, uh, but you can buy weedless hooks uh, with weed guards on them if you'd like to. Um, this really works out in clear water. Most of the time when you catch fish on the wacky rig, it's going to be on the fall. Um, basically what we're trying to do here is mimic a caterpillar or a worm or something of that nature that's uh, dying. This is a very patient technique. Basically going to pop it and let it fall. You always want to let it fall on slack line. And you're going to pop it and let it fall. And it always falls on slack line. Most of your hits are going to come either when it first hits the water and starts to sink or as it's fallen after you pop it. And with the nail weight, it's always going to fall nose first, um, depending on where the nail is. And sometimes, depending on the water column and how things are in the water, it will actually spiral on its way down, depending on the size of your nail and how heavy your nail is. So this is a very slow technique. You don't want to rush anything when you're using the wacky rig. A lot of this is trying to mimic something that's dying, and it's not a very quick process. Uh, so you just want to be slow and easy with this Just kind of take your time and let the worm do all the work <laughs> Now we're going to take our nail weight out and just remember This is just a little tack nail that we slid in the nose of the worm Take them. fall is a lot slower. <laughs> nice slow pop and let it sink. Pop and let it sink. Pop, let it sink. Very slow process.
just kind of slowly falls with the nail weight of course it's going to fall in one direction a lot faster than it will the other this is not an ideal setup to use with a bait caster um, it's just so light it makes it a lot more difficult to cast without the backlash um, just about impossible as we problem with fluoro versus braid is your fluoro line has a memory to it and there's a lot of stretch to it um, so if it tangles or twists or anything like that you're going to be de dealing with the tangles and twists for the rest of the day fishing braid doesn't have the memory that fluoro does um, there's no stretch to it it's a real good sturdy line and you can use a lot bigger weight test line with braid um, 20 pound braid is about the same diameter as six pound fluoro and you can see it definitely makes a difference having the nail in there um, your fall times are going to be a lot quicker uh, just the action of the worm is going to be a lot quicker and the nice part about nail weights is you're not necessarily restricted to where you put the weight uh, these stick baits have a nice little slot here you can slide your nail in to the middle of the worm if you ever so choose and it drives the fish crazy so we're going to stick our nail weight back in the front and if we throw it out in the deeper water uh, you'll be able to see that spiral a lot better so we're going to throw it out into the deep end of the pool and it just kind of spirals as it falls there very slow spiral. And most of your hits are going to come right now as it's fallen to the bottom from the initial cast. have it folks that's the wacky rig uh, it's a great tool to have in your bag uh, like I said the wacky rig tool helps out tremendously uh, it'll save you on plastics especially if you're fishing with Senkos uh, at eight dollars a bag uh, the wacky rig tool will make your plastics last a lot longer and it'll save you from losing your plastics when bass uh, foul hit it or hit it in the tail or the front instead of just committing to it all right guys thanks for tuning in uh, today you saw me using the same reel I use every time. Uh, this is my Abu Garcia Black Max and the Abu Garcia Vengeance. Uh, this is a 6'6 medium heavy pole. Uh, it's my everyday fishing rod that I use all the time. Uh, of course when I switch it out to creek fishing and stuff like that you'll see different rods. But this is going to be the main rod that I use uh, for my channel. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe. Uh, if you click the little bell next to subscribe. Uh, that lets you know every time I drop a video or anything, any kind of new content or anything like that. Uh, like, comment, share. Share with your friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash floutdoors. Um, making these fishing videos and hunting videos and all these other videos gets expensive after a while. So if you want to help donate to the cause and get the word out about wildlife conservation and just getting outside, uh, you can go to GoFundMe.com slash FL Outdoors. Uh, thanks for watching. Once again, my name's Philip, and don't forget, get outdoors.